It's time to relax with the offspring. We're very, very happy to have as our guest today, Bob, Bob Rock. Yep. Thank you for joining us very much. Yeah. It's funny being like, we're like the, you're the guest and we're like the interviewers, but normally we don't work like that. We just have fun yeah. in the studio and, and, and work on songs together. So yep. this is, uh, this is really cool. So thank you. How you doing? I'm doing great. Awesome. It's good to, good to in have the you on here. In, in the hood. In the hood. I know. Extra points for the offspring hat. I yeah. love that too. Yeah, He's nice. representing. <laughs> Well, it's so great to have you here, and we want to give you a chance to talk about, well, whatever you want, I guess, but, um, you know, your history would be interesting. I think, one of the things I think about when I think about Bob Rock is that he, of course, gets attached to Metallica quite a bit, right? Right. In, in a way, justly so, right? They made the, the, the biggest metal record of all time and blah, 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 and it's really big, and it's, you know, it's They're classic. They're one of the biggest bands and currently and have been for a decade. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, nothing wrong with that. Right. But- I think what that overshadows in Bob's case sometimes is that that's that was not the world that you came up in. It wasn't like you came up being a rock or metal producer or whatever. You really not came at up all. in the Vancouver yeah. punk scene. Yeah. Yeah. Um that's the thing. But um the great thing about what happened w- with the beginning of punk uh, when I first started working at Little Mountain, um when punk happened, uh all of a sudden, you know, it was cool that guys that weren't virtuoso musicians could make records. And I worked in a studio. So um, uh, the man- studio manager said at night, you guys can work with these local bands that are up and coming. So Ron Obvious, who got a job uh, the same time I did, we just split all, you know, you do this band, I do this band. So every night we, we recorded all the, the punk, the whole punk scene. But this was after, explain what you did during the day. Oh yeah, I did jingles, you know, commercials and stuff. <laughs> yeah. You said Little Mountain, that's the name of the studio. Yeah, Vancouver, yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah, when we were younger and we were just figuring out, uh, you know, how to be engineers and stuff. So Guy, you, guys would come in and they would say, okay, we're doing a jingle for whatever. Yeah, like Hudson's Bay or did all sorts of things. Right. And actually the the thing, I was talking to another engineer, famous engineer, Bob Clearmountain, and he did the same thing. A lot of guys my age, we did that. It was kind of like you were making a one minute record every day. So we record drums, we'd overdub, we'd sing and mix it, a 30, a 30 second yeah. or a one minute song, yeah. right? Right. So it was good experience. Wow. So that would be your... You're nine to five, pretty much, yep. and then and then as soon as that was done, you'd have yep. whatever local band come in, whatever it was that day, and yeah, and and record all night. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, not much sleep, yeah. but it was yeah. great. That's how you learn how to do it. So they allowed you to sort of moonlight. Yeah, and does that mean you charge the bands when they're coming in? Yeah, but they, they, it was nothing. It was cheap, right? Yeah, it was really so cheap. So it was affordable for them and yeah. all that, right? And do you found like did the bands appreciate it that that they had oh, a place yeah. to go? Yeah. And like I said, it was like I was learning, they were learning. Yeah. Yeah, that experience. You talked about uh, Pointed Sticks, I think. Is that one of the bands yeah. that you worked Pointy, with at the time? Pointy and, Sticks, uh, yeah. Yeah, and so the, there was, um, there was a Hawaii, lot of... Go to Hawaii, the Hawaii song? Yeah, uh, the, uh, uh, let's go to fucking Hawaii. I can young, say that. This is on a podcast, right? <laughs> yes, the, you the, can. Young, the Young yeah. Canadians. The young Canadians, <laughs> a great band. Yeah, very good band. It's like, yeah, it goes, it goes like deep, like stuff that you don't even know, right? And yeah. you know, of course, you know, D- bands and stuff. D- but, DOA. Yeah. Oh, of course, DOA. Everyone and, knows. Yeah. 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 And Legendary. subhumans. And, oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, we, we, in the conversation I had this morning, as I told you, you know, even, it's funny, the M- Buhay Gardens in San Francisco, yeah. Metallica used to play with all the punk bands. Right. So there's right. that. And they were big <clears throat> fans of punk because they were off on their own, right? I yeah. figured there's something about the speed, the uh, thrash thing. There's a connection between punk and and them, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, there was a sure. crossover for well, sure. Totally. Right? Well, the D- whole DRI and all that kind of kind of crossover. Yeah, Metallica definitely crossover on that and on that too. Yeah, speed metal was kind of a thing back Venom then. But, and, but, yeah. but Metallica was she. They were different than that oh, even yeah. kind of right. Yeah, hundred percent. But yeah, yeah, for sure. That's uh really cool. Now you've talked about. Uh, Going to parties where some of the punk bands didn't always like you guys for well, whatever it was, what, right? Like, weren't well, punk enough. Well, we weren't punk enough, but, uh, well. When we you could say talk we, about, are you talking about the Paolas? Yeah, I, know, the pa- I was, I was, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was jumping forward a little bit, I guess. But, yeah, yeah let's talk about that. Let's, we'll, we'll move into that, I guess, if you want. Well, what happened is is um, uh, we wrote a song, and I worked at this studio, so we, we wrote this song. We got art from the Canadians to play organ. 
It's called China Boys and blah, blah, blah. And we put it out and we made a thousand records. They sold out right away. And we got signed on one song. That's How great. dare you? I know. <laughs> no, How dare you? So <laughs> Im- Im- immediately we were hated because everybody else is trying to get signed. And, and right. We put out yeah. one song. And the this, record company, they said, of course, you got lots of songs. And we're going, yeah, oh, we got yeah, we got hundreds, right? We had none. <laughs> that was the only song we wrote. So anyway. <laughs> and this so, band is the Paolas. This is, yeah, about. the Paolas, yeah. You and, and Paul were kind uh, of the Paul, main. Yeah, the main guys, so. Uh, you yeah. never said that it was your mom who bought all thousand records. Like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, they all sold out. Hey, yeah. thanks, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the um, the thing about Vancouver in that scene, it was uh, universal. the university radio station because nobody would play in commercial that they wouldn't play any good music on right, right. <laughs> on the regular yeah. radio we station. We had that here as well, a couple of radio stations. Yeah. Like KXLU, mm-hmm. mainly. Yeah. And so <clears throat> it was really everybody, wa- everybody was in a band. So there was a scene. And I think we got, um, everybody just talked about the bands from here, New York, you know, uh, Chicago and London. Right. And Vancouver was kind of off in the corner. So, uh, like, great writers there, like Art Bergman and the Modernettes, Buck Cherry. Uh, yeah, he he got money for the band, Buck Cherry. They wanted to use that, and he they had to pay him. Uh, it was great. He was Buck Cherry cool. first. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. true. You don't really hear, you kind of have to really be in the know to know about the history of the Vancouver punk scene, right? I yeah. Mean, you go DOA, DOA and... Yeah. SNFU, SNFU. Uh, well, SNFU was Diglo more Abs, like, yeah, uh, there was the subhumans, yeah. Yeah. yeah, there was the Canadian yeah. subhumans, right. but uh, so. subhumans UK, subhumans Canadian, yeah, the yeah. the Canadian subhumans, like um, I think in the Barbados Iggy Pop documentary about punks, I think some one guy was saying that really, it's not like we wanted to bring down the government, we just wanted to be make records. And punk was, like I said, with Paul and I, all of a sudden we could write simple songs, play fast, and, you know, we didn't have to be virtu- virtuoso musicians. Right. But um, the, um, yeah. Did anyone in particular inspire that? Give you that realization that you didn't have to be a great musician? It, were any? Well, let's put it this way. When the Nevermind the Bollocks came out, it's like yeah. I could I could play that like immediately. Right. You know, it's simple, <laughs> fast, loud. Yeah. You know, and it just appealed. Yeah. Yeah. Probably Ramones for us, but I mean, Sex Pistols, of course, was one for sure. Point of well, sticks were big yeah. Ramones, right? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. What else? I mean, a lot of the punk bands were well, sim- even, simple, right? Even TSOL and. You know, Ron's playing. I think it's great, and there was a lot of stuff back in the day that I didn't understand how we how we did some of that stuff. Um, but it's not it's not Jimi Hendrix. It's not certainly wasn't Eddie Van Halen. You, right. You know, um, and, you know there were you, if you could pick up a guitar, put three chords together, and make it sound different and unique, then you could do it. You didn't have to be shredding. You know. Right. So yeah, I I understand what you're saying because we felt the same way. We can connect on that level that those bands. Yeah. I remember. I well. remember seeing uh, during. COVID, I watched uh, straight out of Compton, and I just n- the same thing happened. They were trading cassettes. They were putting out independent tracks, right. just like the punk scene. So I kind of related to that, yeah. you know. And if it, then everybody in Vancouver got better, you know, by just doing it first and blah blah blah. We got better. Our song writing got better. You know, yeah, we so got a new drum. Yeah, sticking with it and doing sticking, it over and over again. With you're it. bound to get better, unless you're really awful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's you don't always get better. <laughs> uh, well, you know, we had we had a cassette demo that we wanted to. Sometimes we tried to sell it, but sometimes you're talking about cassettes. Like you go to Radio Shack, you could buy a pack of ten for like yeah. maybe ten bucks or something like that, and we would just dub them off. Right. And just give them out at the parties, right? Yeah. We get rid of twenty five or fifty of them at a time. Maybe you got yeah. one. I don't yeah. know. No, I don't. I don't. I think Daryl has one. Yeah. <laughs> Daryl does. Yeah. But yeah, cassettes. Yeah. That's how you. That's how you did it, right? You got to yeah. just get it out there. However, yeah. how, whatever. I think it takes. our our friend Rick ended up with most of them. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. But uh, anyway, so you're in the payolas for a while, and do you want to talk about that? That that the, how that happened? How it. Um, well, we are the uh, uh, what's the guy that uh, the A&R guy? He signed R, uh, uh, REM and us the same week. 
Okay. Oh wow. They did better than us, but uh, uh. but you know we got signed and you know we toured America and you know. How yeah. long till Eyes of a Stranger came out? It was uh, after our first album, um, so I guess it was eighty one when that album came out, A Stranger to Danger. Okay. And we got Mick Ronson to produce our record, our second record. I produced the first one. And Mick Ronson was big for you, right? Yeah, it was really big. A big yeah. Bowie fan, and him in particular. We asked him actually to do our first album, but it, the, he didn't get the cassette until we'd already done that album and stuff like that. So someone had a line to him? You were able to actually reach him? Yeah. It took a while, though. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... Um, yeah, we just we just learned to be better and touring the states and across Canada. You you start to figure out like what's good about you, and you just get better. Mm -hmm. So it was yeah. great, and that had a lot to do with the other career that I've had. And and you know, even talking this morning with the, another interview, um, it it's like a big part of my overall career working in that and coming from that thing like we talked about metallica i'm not a big metal fan it comes down to you know early rock like led zeppelin and those early things when i was a kid but then the punk scene that part of it is is different so when i work with metallica i didn't change them okay i just helped them make the record they wanted to make mm -hmm. and that comes from the experience of even jingles you know, the stuff I'd done, right, right. you right. know, like I recorded TV shows, strings and stuff. It's the same with Buble. He thought, why am I getting the guy that does Metallica? <laughs> so there's all this stuff. Anyway, all that ad adds up, all those experiences and being around like great writers, even local ones, not famous, didn't become famous, like Art Bergman, Buck Jerry, great songwriters. Right. So a lot of producers... They've come up in the engineering world, but not a lot of them have actually really been in bands or in successful bands, right? So, I mean, that you must know that that gives you a unique perspective, right? And probably, you well, would say, the, helps you in the studio, right? The, the whole thing with me was it was always about uh, records and songs, and and it was always about the sounds. Like, I was always drawn into, like, I remember All Right Now, you know, it starts with a guitar. It's like, why? That's so freaking cool. You know, <laughs> right. and then I heard good vibrations, the beach points. I go, I don't know what the fuck's going on, but I want to know how to do that, right? Uh -huh. So there's that. And I thought, I, you know, there's there was no plan. It was all, I got a job at the studio. That's where, that that's called day one of real stuff, right? And and then everything just happened. And you, you kind of, when you work with other people, you take this. I like what they're doing. I'll put that in my, my folder. You know, and it was like many years. I mean, before Metallica, there was like 20 years of me finding, getting the tool set, right? Right. And sure. so I think besides <clears throat> being writing songs and knowing great lyricists, etc., all that stuff adds up to, and being Sonics, the experience with Sonics, I had a toolbox for Metallica, Right. And when I met them, they 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 used the same guy for their whole career, and so when I, they never recorded in the studio together, okay. And I'm going like, what's up with that? What do you mean they didn't record together? Well, basically, James did all the guitars to a click track. Lars would overdub the drums, then they'd do the bass, and then they'd do the vocals. And Kirk would come in for four days and do all the solos. So in other words, there was no connection between people uh -huh. it was like, during the creating of the it, yeah songs. It, they're creating right. songs anyway right. so when i came along i'd never done that because uh -huh. it, it made no sense and there's all these things that there's reasons why you record a band live in the studio one as you know you can you can change things right, uh -huh. right. on the fly right. tempo is important there's all these things that are important so when you hear the whole thing together you kind of know what you're going to end up being you're anyway so I brought that, and they fucking hated it. You, so know, you wanted them to play together. Yeah. I, mean, I guess normally at least you would start with the drums, right? The drums yeah. you consider that kind of the foundation of the song and stuff. So you, you made them but, play together. Yeah, the and like you know, because um, we make records together, you know, th you change things all along, uh -huh. right? You know, because, you know, you put a part in or you, you, things change. When you, you've done this thing and you've worked three months and you want to replace the B section back then, you just you just can't do it. Right. right. So it's limiting. 
Anyway. Well, when you're on Epitaph, you can't do it either. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I'm not bagging on Epitaph. I'm just saying, like, we had 10 days to make yeah, yeah we just we were limited. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, we didn't even... We didn't even demo. Just, just I mean, write the song, go in, and we and, didn't have the resources. We didn't have the studio if, at the time. And now you, I mean, now you can do all this stuff. A kid can do it in his, his living yeah. room on a computer, you know, with a drum machine. Well, the drum machine is the computer, you know, just to, to right. get an idea, then go record. Right. Yeah, but like, there's a part in "We Are One" on Ignition, and kind of goes on too long. Oh right, but yeah, we yeah. didn't know until we got in there, and then once you record it, it's, you can't yeah. do anything about it. It's just it was I your do, best guess going I in a studio. Do you remember "Take It Like a Man"? Uh, Tom Wilson, our producer, cut out half the tape, like literally <laughs> cut out a piece of the tape. Did he? We're getting rid of this solo select, this solo section, and, All we're, right. and we're trimming this down a little. And bit. it's almost like you're learning, and you're going, "Is this how we make records?" I guess yeah. it is. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, nowadays you just you know cut and splice on the computer, but. You know, but it was yeah. much harder when cutting the tape because if you screwed it up and got it wrong, uh, well, we got to start over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I'm sure Bob knows very well, right? Yeah. You did a lot of tape work. Yeah, I did. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So you, uh, you're starting at Little Mountain. You have your band on the side. Your band kind of runs its course. You you start engineering bigger and bigger records, right? So yeah. there's a, there's a, a producer. The producer's kind of like the, yeah. the head honcho, and then the, the engineer kind of does a lot of the Yes. Whatever manual work, I guess. And that's where you start. It yeah. Started going. Who were some yeah. of the producers you worked yeah. under? Well, under the, the main guy that gave me a shot was uh, Bruce Fevron. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, puts his pants on one leg at a time. <laughs> <laughs> but once he gets his pants that's on. Right. <laughs> the thing was, was, what was interesting is because of the work that I did with all the local punk bands, he wanted to change. There was a certain studio kind of uh, thing going on. I wouldn't say it's conservative, but, you know, he just noticed people were saying, well, this guy, he's kind of more interesting or more raw, a little louder, blah, blah, blah. So he gave me a shot and it just connected. Wow. Nice. And what were some of the bigger records that you did around With him? that time? Yeah. Well, um, I guess uh, how we got noticed, really, the biggest one, we did this uh, Canadian band called Honeymoon Suite and the guys in Bon Jovi heard that. And we did them, and then it was like, then it was um, Aerosmith and blah blah blah, like lots of bands. But in the in, but in between that, I was started producing. So uh, when the Pale stopped, I concentrated on being a producer. At first, I was doing engineering, mixing, and everything, and I I couldn't do that; it was too much. So I got I hired Randy Stop as an engineer, and then I could concentrate on being a producer. You just learn about these things. Uh huh. Right? Yeah. And what was your first producing job, or I was uh, a band called Kingdom Come. That kind of sounded Come. like Led Zeppelin, right? <laughs> well, maybe a little. I don't just, know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It just, <clears throat> I, I, ultimate admiration, respect. But that he was, he did the Bon Jovi record. Right? It just cracks me up to think of Bob in there, like, yeah. one more time on Living on a Prayer. You know, yeah. go. Yeah. You know, it's just. It's God so damn it, John! <laughs> I said like this, <laughs> doing it again. Well, that was Bruce. So I was the engineer mixer. So we did that whole record in five weeks. Five weeks. And five you did it in Vancouver, so the in band. In Vancouver, yeah, they came to Vancouver. Destroyed, destroyed, destroyed Vancouver. They tore the city <laughs> apart. Really? Yeah. Met every stripper in Vancouver. I mean, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Just watching it, I'd never seen people like that. It was amazing. Wow. From New Jersey. And then you met Molly right. Crew. And then, it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're like, how could this get any worse? <laughs> wow, that, that is awesome. Well, and you've kept, I, I know you, you still work with Richie yeah. to this day. You've kept a really good long relationship with him. Yeah. So that's Always good yeah. people. You know, yeah. even like when we talk about music, I mean, that's where my heart, mm. you know, punk and different kinds of music and stuff, but that's not really the point to what I do. You know, I find that... Um, all that stuff is important. Like all those references always come to, there's fruition that grows out of all those influences, right? Mm -hmm. And you just become better at it. What we, as humans, we have a tendency to want to uh, put everything into a certain category. You know, it's like you became the metal producer when you did Metallica. We're a punk band, right? Because we came from the punk scene. But really, we all just like good music and good songs, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you've you know produced Motley Crue, 
uh, you produced us. You produced Michael Bublé. Yeah. Right? You know, so you've done a, a lot of different things. It's all good music. It's just very different. And you know, I think as we get older, we also stop compartmentalizing everything and really start to learn to appreciate you know other things. Right. More. Yeah. Unless. Yeah. You know, how do you go? Way. How do you go from Metallica to Michael Bublé? How does that work as a producer? Um, it's the basics, and the basics is, uh, like for instance, the. Uh, how I got involved, we have the same manager, Bruce Allen, your manager at this right. point. And um, uh, the producer he was working with, he brought a song and the producer said, the song's shit. And Bruce says, uh, went, well, talk to Bob. And Michael's going, the producer, the Metallica? And he, he just explained, no, there's, there's history beyond that. So he came to Maui. And I just listened to a song, and there was really obviously, you're missing this, you double this, which is that all years of being in studios and watching other guys, you know, what they do, there's patterns and stuff. What's missing? And we, I got him to rewrite the bridge, and I got real guys, Josh Freeze played drums on it, and we, we cut the drums, and, he, and Michael just went, oh my God. And it was, and anyway, it was so different. And then we started the relationship. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's another guy. You bring up Josh. I mean, Josh plays in the Vandals. He plays with us. He's played with Sting. He's played on Boo Play stuff. I yeah. mean, you know, that guy can it's play. It's the same it's, thing. He it, loves music, and he just loves playing all different kinds of all different kinds of music, you know. Right. Yeah, Josh Josh drums for all my favorite bands and, like, a lot of the bands I hate, too. Like, he just drums <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> like, you know, he's... Right. Yeah, don't drum yeah. for anybody, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and it comes down to the love of making records. Yeah. You know, yep. there you go. So do you feel like you can, you said he brought in a song, you can listen to it and just, this is what you do as a producer, like that part doesn't work, that part needs to be longer, That and that's how you evaluate a song or see it? You can I don't just... really, it, it, it ends up becoming kind of more of a, a I don't know, a feeling. It's... It, there's so many re repetitive things, like even bands, you know, like everybody knows like a bass player has got this certain personality, a drummer's got this, you know, you can always tell who's like, who's the alpha male in the band, you're gonna, <laughs> who's dragging his feet, there's always, in a band, there's always one guy that's not as good as ever, but he's a friend or what, you know, <laughs> it's all these patterns that you Shit, you he's see. talking about me, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> No. no. Oh, no. no. Don't be silly. Don't be... <laughs> anyway. So it's the same with songs. You just see, like, so many bands, they have great verses, great feels and stuff, but it never goes anywhere. It's just words on top of music, right? So there's a, a thing that has, you know, you learn that there has to be a lift. Actually, you know, the greatest example is you talking to you. I was going to say. You know, it's like, <laughs> I, want you guys go I do think this. I'm going to quote you on this, but you basically, when we talked <sighs> about what you did, is you love punk music, but there wasn't a lot of people that had great choruses, and you wrote great choruses, and that's the offspring. It's the same thing. Like, you found yeah. what I found. is like lots of great songs, and we love all those songs. Yeah. You know what I mean? We did talk about that. I, we love the energy of punk music and the spirit right. and the vibe. The whole thing was great, but there weren't really a lot of great songs. Right. Yeah. Song songs. I yeah, don't know. Yeah. yeah. Can you, can you name along. a couple just off the top of your head? What would be a great well, punk Well, Ramones song? Had, a, had a lot. For sure. You they, know, they had... um, early on, you know, yeah. I think there were some some great X songs, but I don't know that they had like even so much choruses. You could sing along to them. Not, I could. Not really, right? Yeah, not really choruses. Um, TSOL, not TSOL. particularly melodic, really. Yeah. Oh, come on, um, Dead Kennedys were catchy as hell. Well, this is, uh, yes. <laughs> but Holiday <laughs> in Cambodia, I'm sorry, but it's yeah. got a chorus. See? Yeah. yeah you know, <laughs> right? No chorus, right? Yeah. yeah, the, yeah all the other songs are. Song. But that. Yeah, Adolescence Had Amoeba, uh, that's, that's a real song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take little abortions, blah yeah. blah blah. Arc yeah. fuck hill, right? Like, <laughs> that's, a good, that's a chorus. That's a catchy yeah. chorus. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So great music, not always great song. I don't institutionalize that. That, that doesn't really have a. I guess it kind of has a chorus, but yeah, it's a great song. One of my yeah, favorite totally. songs ever, right? But right. so that's kind of what. We used to sit around and hash out and stuff. Is like, how can I take the the energy, punk rock, and the vibe and all that, and make good songs? You also, I remember early on. I think it was like take it take it like a man around that era around ignition era, you really wanted these songs to groove too. You know, I think take it like a man has a super strong right. groove to it. Yeah, you know, 
Um, so that that was important. Yeah, you know, yeah. That probably goes back to ACDC, on. right? Because ACDC, even though they're a rock band, right. yeah, they really yeah, have yeah. a groove to it, right? I mean, yeah. I'm sure you would agree. that. Absolutely. Yeah. All those things, and get, going back to Metallica and what a producer does, it's like what I learned from Bruce and the records that I made is where the where a song sits tempo-wise. There's a certain, a magic number where the riff sounds the best. You know, one beat too fast or one beat too slow, it's not the same, right? And so I got into that. And once again, when you're all in the same room, when I did pre-production, we could adjust that, right? right? And keys. And I've told this story many times. One of the things that when I was working with them, I'd write down the speed and then the key. And after six songs, it was E, 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 E. And I'm going like, why is everything E? And James said, it's the lowest note. And everybody, yeah, that's really funny. But I said, but all the bands you, that you're influenced, like Black Sabbath and even Van Halen, Motley, they're all tuned down to D. And the next song was Sad But True. So they tried it and they went, oh, fuck. That's nice. why Sad But True is so heavy, right? Yeah. See? Wow. There you go. Good thing Bob was there. A fire. Yeah. I, I imagine how it would turn out. I know. It would have been an E. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so how did uh how do how did California Cruising get on the record? <laughs> Can we like you produce that? You didn't have any idea, like, hey, let's speed this up or nothing. What happened there? Well, it's cruising California for one. You got the title backwards. <laughs> right. Oh, that that was it then. Maybe that was it. I'm... That's what took it into uh, it. Yeah. Black Falls teasing us for putting that song on the record. It was, it was a little on the poppy side, but, you know. A little. A little. Yeah, what, what, yeah when well, it brought yeah, the... But you see, I think, I think what every artist goes through, every single artist, you make records, and you've got, it's this, um, Bowie said it perfectly. He said, what your record, you want to make this, the same, but... The same but different. Do you know what I mean? Like you just want to be able to move in in small jumps, and sometimes you make a big jump, uh, and you make mistakes because what you're doing is you're trying to be. You want to try and make records, yeah. and you can't help but be in like culture has an influence on what you do. Well, it's interesting with Bowie because he was always kind of reimagining right. himself, Reinventing, you know. Yeah. But but it always did sound like him. It I think probably because his voice was so unique. You Maybe, know, huh? but, it, but it did always sound like Bowie. You knew it was Bowie, even though it's not, you know, whether it's uh, Space Oddity or Low, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, or Black Star. What he did, at the, you know, towards the end, you still it was him, unmistakably. He made bigger jumps, right? Uh, Wouldn't you say, like him, the, the say, Beatles, of course. Yeah, yeah, but they were inventing kind yeah. of cultures right yeah, yeah like the beatles had the perfect you know all the technology multi-tracks and they lived in that point where change was amazing yeah yeah, yeah. yeah when you're in a band you know you've heard this a million times where if someone goes oh it, it just sounds like all their other stuff if you make the yeah. same record and then if you make something different like i don't like it because it doesn't sound like their old well, stuff right? can't wait. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> listen no i'm all for you know i that was just like and listen, I know everything can't be home runs, you know, uh, <laughs> but you know, I, I do see there's actually a lot of people that actually like that song to my surprise, but <laughs> not yeah. everything could be a home run. I, I mean, nobody hits home runs every time they get up to bat. Well, and we tend to prefer more aggressive songs, you know, but, but every once in a while you want to do something that, you know, just throw also a curveball. Um, I, 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 was going out when that record came out. I was saying, I think it was either Fat Mike or Fletcher that dared Dexter to write a real pop song, and so that's what he came up with. Okay, yeah. nice, yeah, you know, okay, See, it's it all was Fletcher. a dare. Yeah, yeah. It, was a, it dare. was a dare. There you yeah. go. Yeah. yeah. See, well, like good for not by, good like for not backing down. Yeah, they yeah. spun that. Yeah. Yeah. See that? That's I respect that now. That's pretty good. <laughs> well, I mean, look, yeah, we came from the punk scene, and that's what we're about, and that's that. That's kind of what. Who we are, but I guess. But at the same in a lot time, we don't want to be limited by what exactly. By, we don't want to be compartmentalized, you know, in any way, shape, or form. That's what I was going to so. say. You can go all the way back to Ignition, and we had we did a song called "Dirty Magic," which was way different than the rest of the record. And so, there's always been that part. I of remember, us. yeah, I remember some of our punkers. Really going to you going to put that song on the record? Fuck yeah, it's a great. I song. I think yeah. every artist that exists that there's always one song like mm, shouldn't have done. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, mm, even yeah. Led Zeppelin. I've heard, I think I'm the Rolling sorry. Stones, you know, talk about some of their stuff yeah. too. I love it. I'm a huge Stones fan. So, And the stuff that's yeah. the most well-known by us is the stuff that is not necessarily the yeah. punkest, 
No, for sure. Oh, yeah. All yeah, right, so. Yeah. Well, so, you know. I don't all right, know. all right. Hey, listen, that's cool. Maybe I stand corrected. <laughs> <laughs> you're on the first song yeah. that we ever got yeah. crap for not you being should, pug. I, you're the, you you're, see you're the hook, buddy. I, I get it. I you know. should see that song in Japan, dude. Come on. <laughs> Do, have you yeah, guys played it you live? Know what? They liked it. Yeah. You played it live? Okay. <laughs> they, they did. Okay. Yeah. I, I believe yeah. you. Also, I, I get a lot of fans from all, from all over Asia, Indonesia, Malaysia, um, saying that you know they want us to come and play that song there. So. All right. I, think, just, I, I think they'd too? be happy for you to play anything out there. Yeah. I think you know our they friend, just want you there. Our friend Pierre Robert legitimately liked that song. He's one of the one of the, the few American DJs I know that that liked that song. He's Pierre <laughs> Robert. <laughs> so. Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. Come on. I, I just remember when it when it came on. I had a look. I said, "No, what the fuck?" Like, I, wait a minute. Yeah. We're spending way too much time on that one. Song. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. You know, Blackpool, we're making a new record right now, actually. We're I, working we're working today. Oh, yeah. we've been we've been working all week. All right, all right. Cool. Tough time yeah. with microphones. Well, I'm ready. I, I speaking of hooks, I'm ready for my next hook. I you guess. ready? <laughs> oh, I asked Dexter if I could do your part on this God record. God damn it. So, I knew it. I've been he replaced. Did actually keep, yesterday. Keep, yeah, keep me in mind for the hooky parts. No. I, I'm tired of handing them all the black ball. <laughs> I love him. I love him dearly. Yeah, okay. But, I, yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah, so we're, we're right getting here. we're getting clo- close ish, right, Bob? Mm-hmm. It's finished kinda. Do you know we got I think you said we got it surrounded. We got it surrounded. Yeah. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Right. The wagons. Well put. So that's like weeks to months. Let's put it in that time frame, yeah. right? To to being completed, wouldn't you I, say? I don't comment on time anymore. <laughs> like nobody believes me when I say yeah. anything. It's just, yeah. yeah, nobody does. You know, you guys are yeah. sounding yeah. like Guns N' Roses at this point. Like, uh, that's oh, coming. No, that was it's the coming. last record. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nine nine yeah. years to do the last record. Yeah, yeah. But We're, getting <clears throat> getting to one thing about this, making this out. Second, uh, making the same record over and over. ACDC is a great example. They stick yeah. to their thing. But there was a time where they lost the plot by doing that, which is flying the wall or something, you know, yeah. they're, you know, huge. And then there was like <clears throat> four that was, eh, yeah. it's exactly the same. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I mean, well, look at, look at Bad Religion, right? Where they, <laughs> where they release that into the known or, uh, whatever it was, that was into the unknown, into right? The, they yeah. made a big departure, yeah. and then yeah. it didn't go over well. So they went back to the style that everyone knows and likes. Yeah. And like, yeah, there's a lot of bands that sound really the same, record to record, yeah. and some people like that. And yeah. I, I don't know. I, no, no, no. I, I just give you shit. It's actually not a bad song. It's it, if it was an offspring, I would have been like, oh. But it was, you know, just a big departure. I, I just, right. you know. Well, ACDC is <laughs> a good example because they do sound very similar. The, it, they did evolve and change a little bit, right? Very yeah. groove oriented, kind of early on. Yeah. Of course, new singer changes everything. But you talked about Back in Black and how it was complete, or yeah, completely different from the stuff that had come before because it was slower for one. It was one of the things you mentioned about it, and uh, it just the grooves were different. Yeah, and actually, that's also uh, Metallica. You know, when I met with them, you know, they played cassettes, right? Mm-hmm. And all the tempos are like. All the demos are like the album, right? And I said, so what changed? And they said, well, I'm quoting them. Uh, but they they said they played with Aerosmith, and they just noticed there were no girls in the audience. And he, they, <laughs> right? And they said that the tempos were down, and they got tired of it. It was almost, they were saying after Justice, they toured, it was like playing algebra. And they just, so they consciously made a shift. We've got to change. You know, yeah, we can't right. just keep doing this. Right? Right, right, right. And, you know, like, you know, I, I ruined Metallica with the Black Album. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, but. Well, yeah. I wouldn't say that. Uh, I but think like I said, everybody's, everybody <laughs> says that I changed them. But yeah. I can honestly say we just made, uh, we just made the record that they wanted to make. It still, wasn't my choice, right? You know, a fucking great record still to this yeah. day. It wasn't like you could come in and say, look, Metallica, you're going to do it my way, right? Yeah. Like that would have no. yeah. never worked, right? It works with us, but not, not <laughs> other bands. <laughs> yeah. So uh, how, how's the new record sounding? Uh, they're doing, these guys, they're doing pretty good or what? What, what, <laughs> oh. what grade would you give them? <laughs> uh, great. Now? Great, yeah. Um, it's not done. Okay. And I'm a, I'm a great <laughs> believer. I think it's the one thing that maybe has changed with, with us through the years is we, we won't if that if you want to call that a mistake there's no mistakes now okay you know because we take the time perspective is everything and one thing that we've done i think is we 
we work in chunks. So we go away for like three weeks or a month and we come back and we can, you know, it's almost like Dexter's thinking the same thing. And Noodles comes in with his perspective. And between the, in other words, if the three of us are happy, it's good. Right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, and the, the other guys too. I mean, yeah. the other guys are in the studio quite a bit and, and loving what we're doing. We had yeah. Brandon in yesterday playing some drums on stuff. Nice. And just bringing really some new energy and excitement to, to the project too, yeah. for yeah. sure. He's really stoked to be a part of this and, and he likes the song. So it's great. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We're pumped. Um, it's we, going to be really cool. And we got, there's, there's, uh, there's a, I think there's a left field song on this one. It's super heavy. You'll know what I'm talking about. Super heavy and just really, you know, machine gun attack guitars on it. And I think it's going to blow some minds, um, but <laughs> nice. it's coming for, it's not, you know, it's coming from a different, it's not poppy at all. No. You know, I, th I think that one's going to be, I think that one's, pe people are going to go, whoa. <laughs> you want a high five right now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah not because I, you, you're, you're doing all the rhythm guitar on that. Uh, <laughs> so, oh, man. Me. Yeah, well, no, I, we're, we're, you know, our last record, came, it took a long time to get the last record out, but we're really, we really want to, we're stoked. Things are going great. Want to keep on going. It's been, what, maybe two years right now? We're going to, it's going to be yeah. about three ish, which is fast for us. Out, yeah. Yeah. But so you're thinking at the end of this year or beginning next year? Or what do you think? Yeah. 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 Right. Cool. I think so. We're going to go everywhere, the world and elsewhere. We're going to yep. hit all kinds of places, I guess, right? Uh, yeah. Universal domination. <laughs> yeah. We're playing Costa Rica for the first time yeah. in a month. Yeah, soon. First wow. time playing there. That's so awesome. There's always something, a month, yeah. always something new, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's very cool. But anyway, enough of that. Let's talk about hockey. Oh, fuck. Sure. Let's. let's. The, the, the hockey guys right yeah, here. Bob yeah. being Canadian, of course, it's mandatory that he likes hockey. But yeah, that's... He, he's, and it's in his blood, I yeah. think, right? Yes. The Canucks are your team? Canucks are my team. Always been? Since I moved to Vancouver, yeah. Okay, because you grew up in Winnipeg, right? I grew up in Winnipeg. You know, when I was a kid, I liked uh, Gordie Howe and the, the Red Wings, and then it was Bobby Orr in Boston. Yeah. And then when I moved to Vancouver, I became a Canucks fan. Yeah. Nice. Diehard Canucks fan. Yeah, and I'm a, I'm a crackhead. I'm a big Kraken fan, obviously. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I I just love the sport. You know, my son was at the Vancouver game last night uh, yeah. in Vancouver. Didn't your kids play? Yeah, my kids played. Um, in fact, my oldest played with one of the kids that's on the Kraken right now, uh, y Yamamoto, Kyler Lam y Yamamoto. Oh, they were yeah. teammates together. Wow. So oh, no. yeah, and uh, it's 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 I I've just grown up loving hockey. You know, and I remember I was I just went to my I was. But I was in high school, and I'd never even paid any attention to hockey. And I, uh, growing up in L.A., and and my my brother got tickets from his work. He's like, hey, go to the game with me. And I'm like, I don't know anything about hockey. And he's like, I'll buy you a couple of beers. And I'm like, okay. 16-year-old <laughs> me, right? And so uh, we go, Dude. and and this was back before, you know, that it were helmets and everything. And, and we're like four rows above the penalty box, and it was a Kings versus Blackhawks. I remember them just yelling at each other in the penalty box, fuck you, fuck you. And they got out on the ice, and they just beat the shit out of each other. And this is back when they pulled the jerseys over the heads and yeah. everything. And I was like, <laughs> I have no idea what's going on, but I fucking love yeah. this. <laughs> exactly, and, uh, and so I, I, I just at that point, that's when I started watching hockey. And I was I was working at McDonald's in high school, and I bought season tickets. Uh, me and my buddy I was working with, and then we we bought season tickets to the Kings. And uh, so I had season tickets when I was a senior in high school, and and uh, I've just been. I so I grew up a Kings fan, and then um, you know, I, and I I love I just love hockey. I love I, I just I could watch any two teams play. And then when you know when uh, Seattle got a team, uh, I embraced them. I got season tickets, and yeah, I'm, I'm I'm all in, you know. So, so part of our management team is uh, Sandy Bathgate, whose dad was Andy or is Andy, Andy, we're Andy Hall of Bathgate. Famer. Yeah, wow. Hall of Famer. He's responsible for what the helmet or the face mask. What is well, he responsible for? What's the story? Well, there? what happened? <laughs> uh, I think I got it right. Basically, uh, uh, he actually hit a goalie. He a slap shot and it hit him in his face and yeah. it felt <laughs> bad, and that was the moment when the whole league said, "This got to end." And I forget who the I should know this, but one guy Maybe made him uh, made a mask, you know, wow. almost like one of those uh, masks in Jason, the horror, like yeah. Jason, right? Old school, yeah, 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 old school, and that that started. So it's one of those things. Like he right. was. 
feeling bad about what happened, but that was the hockey game, yeah. which is why people got fucked up and no teeth and all yeah. that stuff. Uh, so that changed yeah. the game. Yeah, wow, totally. but he had a great our, career. Our He's friend, a Hall of Famer. Uh, our friend Danielle Chip is a is a goalie and plays hockey and you know, like a local amateur team. And she's got a couple of badass masks. I think Hero helped really? her helped her design. Oh one. yeah, yeah, rad. So yeah, let's talk about this. Rad. You're a, a hockey fan going way back. You you end up knowing us. You do the keep them separated line, yeah. right? Yeah. You go out and play. And I remember like right when that song came out, people were going, dude, that's, that song would be great at a hockey game every time there's a fight, right? Got to right. keep them separated. Yeah. Yep. And so I, I remember the first time someone said, dude, I saw it yeah. at a game. The fight broke out and they played your line. So dude, how, how stoked are you? I was, <laughs> well, I, I, I've been so stoked on it. Like, and I, every time it happens, I, just get fucking ecstatic about it. And I remember, <laughs> just, even when my kids were younger, like we're at a Kings game, you know, we're down here on vacation, went to the Kings game, and and they play it after five. I'm like, fuck, look at, I'm, your fucking dad's cool, man. I mean, I'm, you know, uh, but yeah, no, and, and so they, they do it a lot at the Kraken games, and I, I hear it on TV and, uh, you know, at different games. And yeah, they do it. A lot of teams use it uh, to oh, this day, funny. and I, I absolutely love it. It's something I never get tired of. And yeah, and your songs that you produce, I mean, you you're just the arena rock uh, guy because yeah. every I mean every song you produce it seems like I remember played. being at the Ducks game and going up. Oh, here's another another one. Oh, another one. Oh, oh, yeah. Here's oh, another, another one. one. Another one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you've done a lot of great uh, arena themes, you know. But yeah. yeah, I know. Imagine if the song got played at like. I don't know, underwater ballet or something yeah. like that. It wouldn't be nearly as cool. You know, lucky yeah. for you, it ended Luckily, up being hockey. It all worked out great. So thank yeah. you. You know, <laughs> yeah, right. kind of song. So yeah. how, uh, what, how, how are the Canucks, how are they looking this year? We got to work well, on that, though. We got, let's not, I think we should work on that song. What? The underwater ballet song. Yeah. Yeah. We should work on something. Maybe, you going to yeah. write something yeah. for me? Or what? Maybe, <laughs> maybe Mike Myers could help us on yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, the Canucks are doing really well. And it's 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 really good. We um, yeah, we were talking earlier about it. It's kind of like one of those things that magically it's a, a, a great players. We got some superstars, but really the bottom line, they're just playing really good hockey as a team yeah. and a great coach, and it has the right thing. So they're doing very very well. Yeah, yeah. this is uh, one of the first years I think you might see like a Canadian team. You got like with the Jets are on fire. Edmonton, Toronto, and Vancouver. We saw a, a Ducks so, uh, Edmonton game. Um, uh, it was great. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, we got the the <clears throat> the Ducks uh, Offspring Day coming up. That's Come right. Out and play. That's yeah, right. Yeah. They hit us up because we're Orange County. Guys, that makes sense. Yeah. And they said, "Hey, we should, you know, do cool stuff together." Yeah. So we said, okay. <laughs> so this is one of the You're cool from Orange things. County. We're from Orange County. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> hey, Let's get together. Hey, that's a- <laughs> Yeah. So we're just gonna kind of—I yeah. don't know—we're gonna hang so we've out. We've been going to some games. It's been—it's been a lot of fun. Bob kind of was the one who really dr- started dragging us into the hockey thing. We didn't listen to you when you yeah. when you said. Well, it was we've good. gone to a—you uh, know—I yeah. came down. We saw the Kraken versus the Ducks. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. yeah. What know, was right. what was the game? Was it Edmonton or might have been the Canucks? Where the, where we were in the booth, right? The, uh-huh. And I was at the front, and I went, "Yeah!" And I went, "Oh, <laughs> right, uh, right." Uh, be careful. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I think that, I think that was the Edmonton. Yeah, it was the Edmonton. Yeah, yeah. And what yeah. about your your guys? How are they looking this year? Fucking always good, dude. Always. Okay. Always. Yeah. Okay. No, listen, man. Uh, Kraken are we're, they're they're a solid team. But we, you know, I mean, I don't want to get too fucking, you know. But they're, they're we got four <laughs> lines of. Second liners. I mean, everybody can score. It's a real same same as Vancouver, real team uh, game, right? And uh, it, it's kind of one of those things when you get all the right people uh, together and they're they're playing really well. Very cohesive unit, and everybody it kind of brings everybody up. So yeah. kind of again, it's kind of same like a band. You get everybody in a band. Say, that, no you, no cancers, yeah. no individual efforts. Everybody's playing. Everybody's kind of it. It, it just shows when you're harmonizing yeah, and you're in sync yeah. and locked yeah. in. It's it's, it's, it's fun, man. Feeling, it's, yeah. And and yeah, so the 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 uh, the Kraken are looking good. I mean, listen, it's the third season, right? So no no one's looking at the Kraken to win a Stanley Cup in three years or anything. But it's just fun. I mean, I figured I'd give them five years before I even. 
worried about so anything. You, know? you jumped right on with them then. Oh, I, I, as, soon as, and, yeah. oh, as soon as they released the logo, I got it tattooed here <laughs> two days after I got it tattooed on my, my wrist you. right here. So, uh, yeah, I know I was all in right from the right from the get-go as soon as we got a team, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I, 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 I've been – I got. I have half season tickets, so I go to, and then I go to a lot of the other games too. So yeah, I love it. Nice. Hey, how's Mariah Carey doing? Uh, allegedly, her and her uh, boyfriend have oh, broken up. So, right. so she she seems you got to a shot. The market. Right. There, there Wasn't is a there... shot. I, it, yeah, there is a shot. So yeah, I, I, I've been brushing my teeth just in what? case. You know, like, <laughs> my hygiene's gotten a little better. Mariah, you know, <laughs> if you're interested, have your have your people call our people. And we'll hook What's up that line from Dumb and Dumber? So you're saying there's a <laughs> chance. There's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Did, so no, uh, I I I, were, I definitely perked up when uh, I heard that. You know. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of people sent me that TMZ article. So <laughs> yeah. I got a lot of people helping me out here. So, everybody knows. So you met Mariah Carey? Yes. <laughs> so how fucking awesome is she? She is awesome. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. Like from one to ten scale of awesome, ten being really awesome, one being not too awesome. No, one being just as awesome, but no, I, because there's no way that she's not awesome. So every number in between is awesome. It's all awesome. Yeah. 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 There's no zero and there's no 11. Nothing. It's all just... So she she looks she, great and she can sing. Yeah, yeah. There you go. She's flawless, right? Flawless. <laughs> As a producer, <laughs> right, yeah. she's flawless, yeah, right? right? I see no flaws. <laughs> see, no, yeah, that's right. See no flaws. No flaws Perfect. detected. You worked on a like a TV special that yeah, it, Michael Bublé did some of and Mariah Carey. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Was it like a Christmas thing? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Powerhouse. Yeah. Right, right. there, man. Yeah. Totally. Can't go wrong. Yeah. How come? How come we weren't on there? How come you didn't get us on this? Next time. I can, I can well, you have the same management now. So do a duet. Yeah, you know, right? Duet with That's Mariah. Right. Yeah. yeah. You got to keep releasing those in. Christmas songs, it, man. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, I'll yeah. do a duet with Buble. I like, I like uh, Buble. He's a nice yeah. guy. I'm holding out for Mariah. I told him that you discovered a song that we did many years ago. I did. I did. Uh, it has nothing to do with not having any new material written. <laughs> and I had to go <laughs> scrape through the vaults and see Fuck, what I have, what I have. No, I mean, part of what you do when you're <clears throat> trying to write songs is just you think of everything. You pull out stuff, listen to old stuff. Sometimes you use some of the old stuff and some of your new stuff, or it just kind of sends you in a direction. And, and I actually ran across something that we had done a long time ago, 10 years ago or something, and, and thought, oh, wow, this is actually pretty good. <laughs> I wonder why we didn't do this. So we actually kind of brought it back, and we just did did some drums on it yesterday with Brandon, and uh, it was really really cool, huh? It was really yeah, fun. It's yeah, it's really cool. And it's like I think you said, it, uh, the song at that point didn't fit on the album that we were making. Yeah. You know, because you, you kind of pick what is best for the album. Right, right. It's kind of like that because you don't really know. but You just kind of write what you write, and then at the end of the day, you kind of see what feels like it fits together as an yeah. album, right? So sometimes... You have a song, it might be a really good song, but it just doesn't feel like it goes with the uh, right. other stuff. Like, the, you know, there's an old song the fans always talk about. It's called Pass Me By, right? And it's like this rumored song. It's oh, really right. a Pass Me right. By. <laughs> and it is. And it's a really cool song, and I like it a lot. And every time I think about it, I'm like, ah, I don't know if it fits with this. So, How did they hear of that? Or, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I don't know. But talk about it. In it exists? Yeah. You, we listened you should, to it once. Yeah? We listened to it once a couple years ago, and you had s some good thoughts on it, and but um, we should finish that one. <laughs> yeah, a new revisit. Yeah, yeah. Bookmark that. That, yeah. that could be the tenth song. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? When we and when we're doing this, when we're talking about something or working on a song, you know, we'll talk about other songs that may have a similar feel or a similar sound. You know, and then we'll start talking about great music that inspired us. We talk about so much stuff from. You know, Rolling Stones, you know, old punk bands, uh, Bowie, we talked about. But we'll go deep, too. Like, you brought up the Summer of Soul yesterday, yeah. and, and I watched it last night with Jackie. It's amazing, it isn't it? Amazing. Such a good documentary, and so many great, great bands playing. Sly and the Family Stone, yeah. I think, probably one of, the, one of my favorite ones on that. Cool. Just great. The Fifth Dimension, too. Well, but um, you said tenth song because we're, I think unofficially we're up to like nine something like that. So we're very close. But I, I, let's talk about this. How many songs do we need to have to have an album? What, what's what's the number? Does it matter anymore? 
Well, if it's no effects, it's like 22, <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> yeah. But that's, I think even that's rancid, different, right? Because yeah. those are almost 20. like, they're just kind of, well, that's kind of the idea. They're supposed to be yeah. short snippets, right? 90 Not second really. songs or something, yeah. Really. Well, the the thing about what you talk about, it, what happens is, uh, well, uh, Load and Reload, the two Metallica albums, yeah. they're coming out, okay? The, it's whatever, 25th year or whatever it is. Um, and that album, we cut 30 six tracks you know because the use your illusion one and two was out so well we should do that too so we cut 36 fucking tracks <laughs> it took us 11 months to get right oh, wow. and then james has to write 32 sets of lyrics <laughs> right can you imagine that uh, it's awful and so basically, <laughs> <laughs> no, but, hard. no, seriously, it's yeah. so much fucking work to get 10 great songs. So really, the, I just said, God, this is a five-year album if we're going to finish it. So we, what we did is we stopped and we just picked, we split it into, we went to New York to finish it, to get away and just finish it. And James wrote all the lyrics. Wow. It wouldn't have happened if we didn't get away. Yeah, and at yeah. some point, you know, you, you, you have this, you know, the, the, the thing is, is with records, what I find is you always have a concept of what you think it's going to be. And it never turns out to be your concept. Yeah. It, it, it's like, like we could never do the black album again because it's everything lines up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Right, right. It's like, yeah. cause yeah. Everything but, just has to click and fall into place. Yeah. Like yeah. everything else. It just, you can't repeat it. There's yeah. so many classic albums that. You know, I think Springsteen did the best thing after we're in the USA. He did a, a thing on a cassette deck, right? Yeah. Right, because yeah. I can't follow that. <clears throat> right, right. Yeah, so take a break. Anyway. <laughs> well, here's what I'm getting at. Like, I think the number before is like, it's like 12 songs usually. That's what yeah. an al album used That's what to I be, right? Say. Yeah, about yeah. cassette. But the thing is, now in this age, no one cares about an album anymore, right? right? You know, you spend three years making, putting together whatever, 12, 15 songs. They listen to like one single and go, "When's your new album coming out?" Right? Like it's um, as soon as an album's out, they want to know when the next album comes out. So the, the albums themselves are so disposable now. Like it's a it shame. It, it, it yeah. is a shame, right? But it doesn't feel like wh why even put in all that to make all these songs that people really they just don't but, take it in the same way. But vinyl, which is albums, yeah, uh -huh. is selling a lot. It's yeah. doing better. It's yeah. resurged, yeah. yeah. So people but. like the format of albums. It's disappeared, yeah. not because of people not liking them. Uh -huh. It's because of the business. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Because I think, you know, also, I mean, I think you, as an artist, I think you've got more to say than two songs. Uh-huh, yeah, for sure. For right? Sure. Yeah. So you're saying I got to write 12 songs? No. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? No, but I'm saying just w whatever you whatever you want to put out, yeah. you know, yeah. whatever the band wants. If it's seven, people will like it. If it's 12, they'll like it. If I it's wonder good. if you could put, like, okay, this song's done, release it to the internet, and then put it all on an LP, and when you have all the songs out, then put it on an LP and, and yeah. you know. Yeah. Actually, make physical. If you do seven songs, people are going to feel shortchanged. They're yeah, gonna feel like you can't really say that's an album. You either right? got to so. do a couple of EPs with like four songs, or yeah, yeah, you know, or an album with you know ten to twelve songs. Right. I I want to hit every time we finish a song. I want to hit send. Yeah. Send it out there, man. Yeah. Let it let. Oh uh, no, I I agree. Like we're it. hanging out. Uh, you played me uh, a couple of songs in your garage. It's fucking awesome, man. I'm like, Don't you, I, I love know. this. That's, you know what? Yeah. But you know, I, it's not like you can. I'm like, hey, send it to me. I'm not, <laughs> no thing. I don't want to be the guy that <laughs> well, uh, leaks any. No, no leaks. leaks for me. Yeah. You know, I don't know if we talked about this before, but we should talk about Fogarty. The, the what he was talking about. What was it? Fortunate son. He told us the story. That what was it? Uh, we went to Dexter and Noodles and I and Adam. We all went. He gave and, me the shirt. Yeah, that's we, a Fogarty. We met John no Fogarty. Shit. Yeah, that's yeah. fucking awesome. It was. Awesome. Yeah. But he was talking about for, about Fortunate Son, and he said he did Down on the Corner, it was a single, and he just did one take. After doing all the backgrounds on Fortunate Son, he did one take on Fortunate Son. And uh, they had to mix it that day. It was mastered on, it was a Sunday. They mastered it on Monday, and it was coming out Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And you're going like, cool. It was that fast. Turn around. Insane. Yeah. It's just insane. 
I mean, Credence is really big for for both of us, you yeah. and me and yep. stuff. So it was really. Uh, it was something our our fathers listened to. Yeah. Really. We, you know, when we were young, you know, yeah. we so kind of shared that with our fathers. So totally, we had the chance yeah. to hang out with him uh, a That's few months so cool. ago, and it was yeah, it was really yeah, amazing. cool as fuck. Him really and his cool. his kids and his wife, his two sons that are in a band. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That is real cool. I mean, they gave me a shirt that was two XL, but. I wasn't offended. <laughs> <laughs> it has his own shirt line, right? Yeah, what? Fortunate Son. Fortunate yeah. Son. Actually, and he hugged us all. Wow. Yeah, I think true. It didn't didn't you say you you we were there? No, you drove two hours to get there to get a hug from John. Fogel. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth it. It was worth it. it. Yeah. yeah, it was like two hours. It was like an hour and a half guy. there, hour forty there, two hours to get home. We, Hugs we, all around. Yeah, terrible weather on our way home. We probably got a photo to prove it, probably. To oh, dig yeah. that up. Yeah. <laughs> now we're making it up. Uh, we don't have a title for the new record yet. Nope. Do we have a theme? Uh, it's a South American themed record <laughs> at this point. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Right. Maybe. Um, maybe. Right. <clears throat> no, I don't know. I think it's a really weird time. Of course, it always feels like it's a weird time, but I swear things yeah. are getting weirder and weirder and with, <laughs> uh, with yeah. everything that's going yeah. along, uh, going on, not just politically, but like, Technologically, right? AI and all that stuff. It's, it's, well, the whole it's, world has went through this, you know, shattering experience together, and then came out the other it, end. Came out the other end, weirder, battered, yeah, yeah. battered, yeah. yeah. Seriously, right. it's it's rough. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of interesting things to talk about and how it, uh, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, I think it's how it affects the individual, right? Your, your music is a very personal thing, and I always try to relate the stuff back to how you feel as a person. Yeah. reacting to stuff or listening to the song and stuff. So that's yeah. that's what I'm interested in writing about. But I don't have any actual lyrics. It's just, yeah, just ideas at this you, point. Of, yeah. yeah. You do have some. See, so. and that goes back to that song. <clears throat> Dexter was feeling it a little bump in the trunk, right? That's right. There it is. See, <laughs> it's feeling, man. Yeah, you're sitting at the stoplight, and the guy yeah. pulls up next. You, boom. yeah. yeah. Can you're we like, stop talking about this song? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, hey, he's the one who circled back, not me. <laughs> yeah, but I couldn't resist. Sorry. Yeah, that was good. That was good. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so, so I guess a single comes up before the album, right? So. Usually, at least one. Yeah. Are you thinking single this this year? That's what we're thinking, right? That's I what... hope so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I get, like I said, man, I want to hit send on a couple of these. I know. You know, I really do. I'm always like that, though. You know, I don't. I never have leaked, <laughs> but I've always wanted. Not to. the leaker. Yeah, not the leaker. <laughs> when you finish yeah. something, you're excited about it. Yeah. You want to get it out there. Ten years, the leaking starts in about another ten years. Yeah. Ten years? Uh, <laughs> no records of just uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, different, yeah, yeah. Different kind of leaks. Depends. <laughs> Oh. Oh, 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 wow. Dad joke. Oh. Hashtag. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The fake laugh. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. all have aging parents. Oh. Yeah. You, you told me once, Bob, that you yeah. actually got to write with Ronnie Wood, like just hanging out in a yeah. living room oh, or something. Wow. It, it, was, it was amazing, and it's just so weird. I just got a call. Uh, uh, do you want to write songs with Ronnie Wood? And I'm, I'm going like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> it's it. yeah. So yes. uh, we had a meeting, and uh, it was great. He said, actually, when we were in the, me it was at what's the Pink Hotel on Sunset, the Is famous the one, Mondrian. No, no, or no, the Chateau Marmont. Or no, the one in Beverly Hills, the famous one, Hotel California, Beverly Black. Hotel. Yeah, uh, Beverly Hills, whatever. Okay. So we meet in the Polo Lounge, and nice. Ronnie Wooden walks in, and we started talking. And he said, you know more about me than I do, which is, <laughs> in other words, I, I'm a huge fan. So it yeah, was like, yeah. wow. Stones and Ronnie Wood and yeah, faces he, and all that Everything, stuff, right? you know. And uh, so we had a great chat. He came over to Awa uh, Maui and he got off the plane and he had just got out of rehab. And um, when he was on the way to the, the place where he was renting, he asked the, the driver to stop at somebody that was taking care of him and said, where, where can I buy a bottle of vodka? And the person said, didn't you just get out of rehab? And he goes, yeah, but I'm on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great guy. That's great. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's rock and I roll. Love, I love that attitude. That's good yeah. scare, right? Yes. Yeah. Very English. AI, <laughs> AI doesn't stop for a bottle of vodka. That's yeah. right. You know? <laughs> anyway, so he, he had this house. He went a few days with his girlfriend. 
Um, <laughs> anyway, he had fun. And then I went over and we just fiddled around and we wrote, uh, Eddie Vedder came as a guest. Oh, wow. And the three of us wow. ha- hung in this house looking over Paella Bay. And we just had the mo- uh, just That's the greatest roll, time man. just hanging out. You know, got three songs, recorded a couple of them. You did? Yeah. And who's, did Eddie sing on them? No. Okay. Yeah, Ronnie sang. But nice. uh, yeah, we cut it in uh, in Los Angeles, and it came out. It was big for in England and Europe and stuff like that. But God. Oh, it was just awesome. great meeting somebody that you know, not an idol, but just somebody that is a big part of your life. Well, it's it's, you're, it's always kind of nervous too because you meet you're like, what if this guy's a fucking asshole? Like yeah. I've loved this person for so long, and yeah. it, such a fucking dick. And you're like, oh god, man, I'm so heartbroken. Yeah. So <laughs> great guy. <laughs> Yeah. You know, you know. The, the thing is, is you meet someone like that, and you go like, "Oh yeah, you'll never hear from." But every Christmas, he he texts, and I'm going like, oh. "Ronnie would just text me. I can't fucking believe it." <laughs> you know what That's I mean? Right. It's yeah. it's that thing. That's amazing. I'm yeah. I'm really lucky that way. So I did. I got to check that out. I didn't I didn't know we had anything solo out. Well, the last thing I have is uh, "Give Me Some Neck." The you know, that yeah, was the '80s or whatever. Um, so I got to check that out. And then Slow Horses has. Uh, Mick Jagger doing yeah. the theme song to that. Really cool. It's, it's rad. Yeah. What's that? A new Super new show? Cool. Yeah. It's a new show on yeah yeah on Apple TV. I think um, Slow Horse. It's about like MI5. Nice. MI6. See, we're still immersed in music. Music is so important to all of us. Yeah. Yeah. That's what yeah. I was going to say when you know I was saying we discuss all these different types of of music and all of that comes into play when we're writing when we're trying to be inspired by something you, know, you never know you know it could be the new green day record it could be some 60s soul thing that that inspires us you know or metallica or who um yeah <laughs> sex pistols <clears throat> okay well, thank you very much bob well it was great have it's like another day we seem to uh get together but it's all great with, now we're gonna now we're gonna go over Come on. Yeah, the control exactly. room exactly i see how it really all is the fun there. starts all yeah, the fun see, starts now with the this. party can start yeah. 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 we're gonna go into the next room and continue con- conversing this is what <laughs> yeah. we do yeah. pretty much every day yeah, with some recording in the whip between. god yeah. damn it that, get some work done yeah <laughs> anyway it was fun as always yeah. thank well, it was you great time thanks, bob. Yep. thanks bob thank you go cracking yep go canucks yeah